What do you guys think of these uh, Taurus snakes? These little fucking things. They seem to be on every fucking road I ride on. What is up, bros? This is Brando, welcome to the AC. I'm just busting my ass out of work. I gotta go home to let the dogs out. If you guys tuned into one of my other videos when I uh, took the, the dogs to the park, you know I've got two miniature pinchers. One of them's 12, his name is Harley after Harley Davidson. The other one is seven, his name is Leo, after Leonidas. Uh, we didn't name him, uh, we rescued him. But Leo, for some reason, can't stop pissing in the fucking house. But, uh, you know, I don't blame him. We're gone for, you know, a decent amount of time during the day, on the days both my girlfriend and I are working. So, uh, what's up there, buddy? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we tried to uh, train them on those. If you've ever seen those piss pads, it's like a cat litter box with a piece of turf on top of it. And Harley, you know, he was raised that way, so he knew from a puppy to use it. But Leo, you know, we've had him for about a year and a half, and he came from just pissing outside like most other animals do to uh, us saying, hey, piss on this fake piece of grass with kitty litter underneath. And he was like, yeah, you guys are dumb. I'm just gonna piss here all over everything else. So, uh, we ended up getting a kennel for him. Well, he actually had a kennel when we, uh, when we got him, dude. And uh, didn't use it, but as soon as I broke it out, he was like, oh yeah, I like that kennel, that's my that's my jam. Apparently most dogs like having a kennel, they like their own little sanctuary to get the hell away from everybody else. So now Harley, once Leo gets out of his kennel, Harley will actually climb in there, like what the fuck am I missing out on? So anyway, gotta go let the dude out take them on a walk and all that other freaking dog parent stuff that you got to do but my subject today is sort of a, a mix a why I ride and you know everybody you know most moto vloggers are they do this uh, segment of, oh I've been riding for this long and I started here and you know what have you and, and those are all cool um, for me, I, I, I started riding, let's see, let's go back to the beginning. I sat on my first motorcycle when I was probably three and a half years old. It wasn't his motorcycle, it was my uncle's motorcycle, and uh, I was born in the UP of Michigan. If anybody's been up there, they call everybody their Upers, And they're basically the Cajuns of the North. If you've been there, you know what the hell I'm talking about. A gorgeous place. But they got their own way of doing things. So anyway, my uncle had, uh, he was living in Florida and he rode his, his uh, Honda, whatever the hell it was, early 80s. It was probably a 70s fucking bike then. Uh, it was probably 83 when the picture was taken. Uh, he rode it from Florida up to Michigan. And I thought that thing was cool as hell. And so the passion began. However, my dad didn't grow up on motorcycles and we were, you know, we weren't very well off. So, you know, I, <laughs> I hear stories of kids growing up on dirt bikes and mini bikes and all that shit. And I thought that was pretty cool, but that sounded, uh, you know, that was someone else's life. It sure the fuck was in my life. I was lucky to get a Huffy BMX bike for $89.99 and 
90 bucks is still a decent amount of money but in the 80s man once I got that huffy man it was uh you couldn't find me of course I watched the movie rad and then I thought I was a BMX rider <laughs> so I'd like to I'd like to meet the dude who watched the movie rad in the 80s and didn't go out on his bicycle and try to do some crazy shit oh a yeeper so not only was I not around motorcycles when I was a kid but I had a or have still to this day even though I'm almost 40 years old an overprotective mother and you know I think most mothers are so my cousin he did have a mini bike and me being infatuated with motorcycles was like I'm gonna get on that some bitch and uh, so I did and when my mom found out she grabbed me by the ear and proceeded to drag my crying ass all the way back to the house and then uh, I got to sit in the car for the rest of the time and hold on to my ear hoping it wasn't gonna fall off so which ended little Brando's riding experience at a young age so fast forward I joined the Navy and uh, I'm about 20 21 years old living in San Diego and man all my buddies have what we call at that time crotch rockets and I'm sure people still call them that now but basically sport bikes so Hondas and Suzuki's and all that shit and that's when I learned how to ride and quickly realized that a bike that can go 150 plus miles an hour with my dumb ass operating it was uh <laughs> was pretty fun to do but I didn't buy my own partially because I knew I was stupid and I was going to be uh, most likely going too fast and eventually doing stupid shit on it but uh, the bigger part being I already had kids at that point I was a young dad I was a dad at 16 and I was a dad again when my son was born at 20 uh, so I had responsibility and I couldn't justify spending the money on a motorcycle for myself and that carried on throughout my you know military career and what I did was I, was I was fortunate enough to have friends that would have you know second and third bikes some guys did custom bikes they, and I was able to ride with them uh, when they go out and you know I was usually I won't say usually always I was on the shitty bike of the, of the group uh, which is okay because you know what if you're the bike with some bitch in the group you take what you can get if it's got two wheels and rolls and you hop on that motherfucker and twist the throttle but once my son turned 18 years old I finally allowed myself to, to buy my own my very own motorcycle and that's what this is this is my very first motorcycle now back when the fat bob came out and uh, I don't know if this is the year it came out but it was probably 2006 2007 when I first saw it all right a dinas had been out for a while at that time but there's something about the look of it this beefy tank the fat boy tank and the dual headlights I really like the dual headlights uh, you know before I was really really eyeing up Harleys I was eyeing up some triumphs I was I was uh, looking into you know I thought for a while I like the the naked bike look with the Ducati monsters and, um, and that had been after riding different bikes and 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 having some experience but once this once I saw this fat Bob with those dual headlights and that I thought it just looked mean and a uh, mean Euro look with some uh, with some American muscle behind it so I was sold and that was the bike I wanted I 
you know, I rode, I rode other bikes, other, some other Harleys, but, um, let's be honest, they're fucking expensive, you know, you get, you get into the soft tails and you get up into the touring bikes, uh, those baggers, like, I mean, you're in for a cool 20 grand easy. And, uh, you know, I bought it, I bought it used and, and then started the process. I'll have, I mean, I'll have this bike for shit. I won't say forever. I'll never say, never say never, right guys? But this is the bike that I've wanted. I don't foresee myself getting rid of it. Uh, I do see myself getting an additional bike because I want to pay it forward. I want to be that dude or who has friends that come into town to visit and we want to ride. Well, I got another bike for you to ride. Um, you know, there are two bikes in the garage, but <laughs> the missus is not letting anybody ride the purple rocket. And I don't blame her. I mean, if one of her po friends popped into town, I wouldn't be like, yeah, go hop on the Fat Bob. So basically, now, I've changed my views. After I've had my own bike, my opinion has changed. And my opinion is now, do not fucking wait. Now, I'm not saying fuck the kids. But I'm saying fuck the kids. There are opportunities out there where you don't have to come out of pocket so much in order to have this experience, right? Now this neck, the, the second bike I get, it's probably gonna start out as a $1,500, $2,000 Craigslist beater. And actually for $2,000, if you're not looking at Harley Davidson, you can get something probably much newer and a solid bike, you know, that's from overseas. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily set on Harley being my second bike. It's all gonna depend on what I find and uh, what I wanna put into it. But do not wait. If you're considering riding a motorcycle and you don't know how to ride right now, or you do know how to ride, and you're like I was and just using your buddy's bikes from time to time, stop that shit and buckle down, save the little bit of money. Yeah, I'd say $1,000, $2,000 isn't a little bit of money, but it's conceivable you can stuff away that kind of cash. Stop drinking Starbucks for fucking six months. Shit, you'll probably, you'll probably have enough money for a motorcycle. Stop smoking cigarettes. Stop going to the strip club. Don't drink as much beer. I'm not saying stop drinking. Just don't drink as much. Whatever. There's ways to do it. You know, buckle down. It is absolutely worth it. If you haven't been on a motorcycle and you think it's something you may like, take that motorcycle safety riding course. You will know by the end of that course whether it's for you or it's not for you. You're going to know. But guys, don't take my word for it. Do it yourself. Find out what it is for you. You hear a lot of vets saying they ride because you, you know they it uh, it connects them with uh, a stress-free environment, and you know everybody does it for for a different experience. You know, I like to say mine is that, but it's not only that. I do it because. It connects you to a different culture, and if you've watched uh, a few of my videos, you hear me talk about the motorcycle culture, you hear me talk about the Jeep culture. You automatically have something in common with other people who ride, Jeeps or motorcycles. Imagine the most beautiful road trip that you could go on. Now imagine taking that same road trip through all that beautiful scenery while sitting on top of the vehicle. That's exactly what it's like. You experience the world different. Now, I would say, in addition to that, you become a better driver. When you're driving a car, a truck, a Jeep, you're just better at it, you're more aware. I'm on the defensive 
whenever I'm on a motorcycle and in my vehicle. Being on a motorcycle has made me that way. I'm always checking, am I in someone's blind spot? What's that motherfucker gonna do? Oh yeah, they're on the phone. Yeah, nine times out of 10, they're on the phone fucking around. I should do a video on that and just take just maybe five minutes of going through and then editing it and just being like, yep, that motherfucker's on the phone. That some bitch is on the phone. Yep, on the phone, like this dude, blinker on, he's trying to turn. Cause he doesn't know where the fuck he's going. Someone's gotta pay attention. He's probably on the phone. <laughs> so, is it dangerous? Fuck yeah, it's dangerous. You don't have a cage to protect you. Yeah, it's dangerous. And that's part of what makes it cool. And fun and adventurous. Because your experience is something that other people don't. Other people who don't ride, they don't get it, right? So, another thing, freedom. You hear that a lot. There is this feeling of freedom that you get being on a motorcycle, right? Especially being on a Harley or any type of uh, custom bike that's made to just freaking rip and that exhaust just rumbles, you know? Now gear, there's fucking all kinds of safety ninjas out there. And uh, basically whatever the subject is, say fitness, firearms, motorcycles, mechanics, Anybody who's got an hour worth of time doing that shit thinks they're a fucking expert. Now I'm not saying anybody, but a lot of people. You know, I see them all the time. Or I hear them all the time and see them all the time on YouTube. Look through the comments of anybody who's got a decent following. Hey, you trying to get in here? Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Because you weren't paying attention, you gotta turn at this light up here, I'm guessing. But that's the other part about it. You wear what gear you wanna wear. Man, I, in the state of Minnesota, there is no helmet law. I wear a helmet because I learned how to ride when I was in California where there is a helmet law. And it doesn't bother me. I'm wearing a full face helmet right now, it's 85 degrees. Yeah, that kinda sucks. Uh, but. It's hard as fuck to do a moto vlog with uh, with only the skull on there, with only the scully on. You wouldn't be able to hear what the hell I'm saying. In the spring when it's still chilly, in the fall when I'm riding and it's 30 degrees, uh, it keeps my fucking face warm. Uh, but there's plenty of people who don't wear helmets around here. And you know what? That's their prerogative. My girl's been riding for 20 years. She doesn't wear a helmet. Is it dangerous? Absolutely. But that comes with the freedom of being a biker. You do what the fuck you want to do. You want to wear gloves, right? It, it, I, I don't freaking poke fun at the dudes who are in, in full gear from head to toe and it's 90 degrees out. You know, I heard somebody say, if it's too, too hot to wear gear, it's too hot to ride. Well, yeah, for you, maybe that's the thing, man. Uh, you know, I see people around here riding with freaking shorts and, and fucking shirtless. Would I do that? No. If I started riding with no freaking skull piece on, I would probably love it. So that's part of the reason why I always wear a helmet still. One, I learned how to ride that way. And two, it doesn't bother me, so I keep doing it. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Comment below. How many years have you been riding? What's your advice to people who don't ride? Thanks for watching as always. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more content. Hit that bell so you know when I'm dropping more videos. And if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like. Anyway, I'll catch you guys later.